sitting in public square and right now in this seat sandy alomar jr you played a deck over a decade with the cleveland indians you've been a coach you're kind of mr indian to a lot of people that grew up around here what does that mean to you it's a very humbling experience that uh, the acceptance that i had in cleveland since i came in we were kind of worried at first because we got traded for a prolific power hitter on joe carter carlos barriga myself and chris jane as a matter of fact but we didn't know what to expect, but when I came to Cleveland, the way they embraced us here was unbelievable. So we, we love it here. You're getting the Lifetime Achievement Award tonight by the Greater Cleveland Sports uh, Commission, the awards here. It, it, rank that <laughs> for me as far as awards go for you. I, this is not just about, this is very humble. It was yeah. that way, very moving because this is not just about baseball. One thing is a collage of many things, many moments. And, uh, you know, getting the respect and the appreciation of it entire community is uh, very, uh, very moving. So I'm very humble about it. Uh, I want to remind you if, you, if this is your first time tuning in or you, you kind of forget how this works, leave your questions in the comments section. I'm going through here and getting them for you. So I want to start and take a look here and see what people are asking. Uh, our first question comes from Tim. Do you want to be the manager in Cleveland? <laughs> <laughs> I knew that question was coming. You knew? <laughs> Listen. Right out of the gate. Baseball is not ready for me right now. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, uh, I enjoy what I'm doing. I know yeah. we have a fantastic manager. I'm not, you know, by any means not saying that I want to be a manager, but I enjoy what I'm doing. I, I'm glad for the opportunity that India has given me right now and uh, look forward in the future, hopefully. But right now, I'm happy with what I'm doing. Would that be the ultimate goal to someday be a manager for you? Um, everybody that coaches want to be a manager yeah. at one point. I just don't have, I don't solicit, I don't have an agenda in general. Uh, I love uh, to respect other people's job and really don't really talk about it unless they're opening spots. I want to talk about ultimate goals with you real quick since we're on there. World Series, right? As a baseball player, that's what you're looking for. You guys came so close in the 90s. What was it like getting there and just how, how do you deal with that, getting so close and then, and then not getting it? Um, it hurts. Yeah. I mean, it hurts you in the gut and it never goes away. And now we have scars to, you know, to work with the fans. The fans, hurt. they hurt too. And and uh, but to have an opportunity to be in a World Series is 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 very important for us. Like if you go to ten World Series and you lose you lose all ten of them, but at least to have the chance to be there is is unbelievable. The feeling that you get in the game seven is uh, is second to none. And and uh, I tell you right now, I enjoy playing in the game seven, but I wish the outcome would have been different. So I I've been here uh, as a coach. And as a player, uh, how many years? I like, almost 20 years yeah. now. And I've been in three World Series. I mean, if you if you tell me that you are going to be in an organization and you're going to be 20 years, will you take three World Series? You say yes. I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. Some people play baseball for 20 years, never been never been in one. So I'm very appreciative that I had the opportunity to be in one. And I've been in the postseason nine times out of 20 years with Cleveland. Left Cleveland, never touched the, uh, the postseason. So. Uh, this is uh, this is my spot. I guess I'm I'm getting close. I'm getting close. You know, <laughs> two game sevens. Uh, you were a, a coach, first base coach here with a, an Indians team that went. What, what's harder to lose Game Seven World Series as a coach or a player? Is it same, it, little it, different? It, it is the same because because as a player, as a player, you entertain you entertaining people. You're like you are there. You like you you can make a difference by playing. When you coach, yes, you get players ready, but you're not there. You know, playing. Yeah. So it's nerve-wracking when you're coaching. I was nerve-wracking when uh, Roger David hit that home run, man. <laughs> I thought to jump in the stands for the fans. I think everybody was with you. We heard it all the way <laughs> around the city. But I was coaching first base. If you see the replay, I would like jump. I was like, wow, this is crazy. I, th I thought right there we were going to come back and win that game. Yeah. See, I thought, yeah, we came back kind of like sneaking around, like, scratching runs and, you know, picking, uh, pick, pecking away, picking away. And all of a sudden we tied the game. Their morale went down, but then that rain delay, man, that was hard. That yeah. was hard, yes. What, uh, you're kind of leaving me there. I don't know if that's it or not. What's the greatest moment for you? Greatest moment for me. I mean, I have many, many moments in baseball, like I say. Uh, but it's not, what, the one in particular, well, having my son in the All-Star game, snatching that trophy from me, that was huge. That was big. I mean, my, my son was seven years old, I believe, and hit the home run in MVP in your own ballpark. He comes into the into the field. He wasn't even scared or nothing. He just jumped <laughs> in. That's trophy's mind. That was an unbelievable moment. The other moment that I have is not just basically a personal one. It's just a, a, a team one. Yeah. Which it was when we raised that banner of '95 uh, uh, American League Central champion, because it, it erased 
a lot of bad memories and it erased a, a drought of not winning in Cleveland. So that was uh, one of the moments that uh, I really cherish the most is the 95 when we raised that flag that we won the division. Let's get back uh, here to some of the people that are, are tuning in and looking at some questions right now. Um, somebody wants to know, and this is something I've heard from a, a lot of fans think, 94, that strike, was probably the Indians' year. Do you guys look at that? Do you look back at that strike and say, that would have been our year? You can say whatever you want, 94. <laughs> no one can disprove it, right? Nobody can disprove that. There was no evidence that we were going to lose it because we, we finished the season hot. Yeah. And uh, the White Sox knew they were, that we were smelling it. So uh, play, at least we were in a wild card at that point. Uh, we were one game behind the White Sox and getting hotter. And our, and our, and our boys have started to believe because – that was a year we went to the to the Jake, and we brought in players uh, with a caliber, uh, a winning caliber. They, had, they knew how to win. You know, they taught us how to turn that corner. Yeah. Oral Hershiser, Eddie Murray, uh, Dennis Martinez, uh, Tony Pena, which is a huge influence in me because he uh, he really helped me a lot with catching. But uh, yeah, '94 was a fantastic year. I felt like uh, we had a great opportunity to be in the playoff and win it. Uh, from Tyler, what is it like playing in the, or what was it like playing in the old Cleveland Stadium? Listen, the, the opportunity that I had, I didn't know any better. There was not many new stadiums in, in baseball other than uh, Camden Yard opening in 92. Yep. Everything was like uh, kind of like traditional old stadiums. It was a huge stadium, though. So uh, you had to cover big stadium, uh, by the lake, windy, cold. It was difficult at first, but... When I first got traded here, I just wanted to embrace the opportunity to play baseball. And the Cleveland Indians gave me that opportunity, and uh, that was my first home. So I don't have nothing bad to say about it, other than that if it was empty, it was not fun to play. <laughs> uh, you got to play here also with your brother. Talk, talk a little bit about that, how special was that, and what's Robbie up to right now? Yeah, that's one of the, one of the things that, uh, one of the greatest memories uh, the, that I talk about is I have the opportunity to play with my brother in Cleveland. And I uh, had the opportunity to go with him to the postseason. We didn't, we didn't make it to the American League champion, but uh, we, we played together in postseason, which is something that we had done against each other all our career. Uh, he, he was driving my mother crazy. I said, you guys go. <laughs> we were playing against Baltimore. You know, we got to go through them. So was she that mom that had, like, half jerseys, like, no, sewn she was together? Just, or? She, didn't even watch, she, she didn't even want to watch the game because okay. she was so nervous. So when we played together, that was so, uh, uh, it was a relief for her and for us because you want to compete and, and you want to beat anybody in front of you, but, you know, you're competing against your brother. You want, you know, and the, and the funny part is it always was the first series we play against them, so one of them is out right away. And uh, one year he beat us, and the other year we beat them. So um, I still needed that ring, though. He, he, he has to with Toronto. He still worked with the Toronto Blue Jay as a special advisor and uh you know, helping uh, in developing baseball. Baseball is definitely in the Alamar blood. This is from Matt. What was your favorite moment from the 1997 season? 1997 season. Wow. You know, there's so many great memories that year. Uh, like I say, uh, the, the, my son going to the field, the home run against Mariano to give us a chance to win that game. Uh, the game that we beat uh, uh, Scott Erickson. Uh, it was back and forward. We thought it was going to be a pitching matchup. It ended up being an offensive matchup. It was like uh, everybody was getting, you know, runs. And it was a high-scoring run that uh, night that game. And having a chance to go back to the World Series, that was, that was tremendous. You look at the, some of those teams in the 90s. Uh, Jim Tomey's in the hall right now. Your brother's in the hall right now. Omar's inching up. In your opinion, how many from that uh, team should be in the Hall of Fame? Wow, you know, I think that... Kenny Lofton should be considered his tremendous in the Hall of Fame. He got bounced out. It was not fair. He's one of the one of the best leadoff hitter that played the game. Uh, he was our spark plug, and he did as much as many other our players did. Uh, he single-handedly beat uh, Randy Johnson's in the playoff in '95. So Kenny Lofton should have been cons way considered. Omar Vizquel is going to be in. You know, he's he's one of the greatest. He's inching up there right now. Yeah, he he is going to be in. He's uh, one of the best. He was a pleasure to watch, man. And you. When you have front row watching uh, Robbie and watching Omar turning double plays and making the play, it's fun to watch as a catcher. Uh, this is from Danny. How do you compete against leagues with bigger budgets? I think she's talking about teams there. So uh, teams are obviously there's no salary cap. So she's wanting to know how do you compete against bigger budgets? Yeah, it how is, difficult it is. Uh, well, our organization does a good job on. They do a great. Uh, they do their homework. Yeah. 
And uh, like I just told you before, I've been in the playoff nine times out of 20 years. I went, played for five different organizations, never saw the playoffs. So, and I play for high markets team. Uh, dollar wise, it's hard to compete, but uh, talent evaluators, they, they, they do a good job. And, I'm, and I certainly hope our window stays open for a little longer uh, and we don't have to go to free agents that much. But uh, it, it's a little difficult with with, uh, with uh, you know with a the payroll. They they have a higher payroll, so you can get up free agents with the, like the hard person guy like that. But yeah. but we still do a good job with, with, with what we got. Where is that window right now, in your opinion? We're we, st- we're still in it. Yeah, we're still in it. I mean, I'll say if we're in the east, it might be shrinking. But we are we're in the central. I think we have a, a great opportunity to continue. They they're doing their best to manipulate roster to see uh, how many. What, Let's think about this. Think about when I got traded here. I got traded for Joe Carter. If you if if you if you think about why we're gonna trade a minor league prospect that could be a suspect, you don't know what's gonna happen. Right. It, it's a it's a big risk for a guy that's a power hitter. You will not make that deal. You want to keep Joe Carter forever, and then you don't sell high. Instead, the Indians went so high and got two guys and a veteran player. Carlos Barrera was a fantastic player for us. It's funny to think back. You're right. People are probably like, who's this Sandy Alomar exactly. and Carlos Barrera? Exactly. This guy? So now we, we were pieces that were able to stay here and create, open that window to, to open up all this winning tradition. Yeah. So the Indians are doing the same thing right now. They just like, as fans here in Cleveland, we, are, we got attached to the players that they have success here and uh, we are very proud of our teams and and I get it but in order to stretch a window you have to have roster move and sell high okay let's take a look and see what sort of uh, questions we're getting I, f- I feel it vibrating a lot so I think we're getting <laughs> getting a lot of, uh, of questions for you uh, all-star game 97 comes to mind people when people think of you all-star game coming back now talk a little bit about that that's a lot of fun that's a lot of fun we were last talking about the for you uh, you're going to bring a lot of memories uh, having an all-star game back at the Progressive. Uh, they, Cleveland Indians did a fantastic, Major League Baseball did a fantastic job the last time the game was here. Very well organized. The home run contest was fabulous. Uh, I just like wanted to be in the all-star game because he was at home. Yeah. I didn't even have a clue if I was going to get in the game because plus Rodriguez, Ivan Rodriguez was a starting catcher. He's a stud. So I don't know if he was going to play the whole game or if I was going to go in for a Cavalier inning. For me to get the opportunity and have the winning runs on the bases, coming up to bat, I'm like, oh, my God. This is, this is I incredible. wanted to play, but I didn't know if I wanted to do this. And then, you know, you had the opportunity to win the game and yeah. deliver it with a home run. I mean, you couldn't ask for anything else. That was a, uh, scripted perfectly right there. I, I was very proud of that moment. Um, let's go back here to the Internet and see who's the toughest pitcher that you ever faced. I, I really... Uh, it's all depend on the on, uh, pitching wise. Okay, I didn't consider you have the the toughest pitchers to give me more problem than some average pitcher. It's crazy. I, I uh, Scott Kaminiki, I couldn't buy a hit against that guy. Uh, Wilson Avery, I couldn't buy a hit against that guy. Uh, Dana Kicker, I couldn't buy a hit against that guy. But then you have Roger Clemens and you have Randy Johnson. I did pretty good against those guys. Yeah. So against closer, I did pretty good. So it varies, you know. There are names out there you probably will not recognize that I didn't do great, but there are also names that you will recognize that I did pretty good against. Who was the? This is my fault for you. Who was the hardest pitcher to catch? Oh man, Tom Candiotti. Yeah, by far. But what did he do? What was? What well, was he the threw a knuckleball. So like, oh, okay. So, so you when didn't I got, know where it was going. No, not at all. <laughs> so when I when I was traded to the Cleveland Indians, this is this is a, this is a fun fact right here. I got traded to the Cleveland Indians. I was so excited to come here. The first thing I did was look at the roster. I look at the roster, I look at the pitching staff, and I'm like, wow, Buddy Black, Grayson Bell. Oh, man, Tom Candioli. <laughs> <laughs> the guy throws a knuckleball. I was so worried going to spring training. I was nervous. I, I lost a lot of sleep because I, I didn't want to perform well. So, But those guys treated me so good, and they embraced me so good. He taught me how, what to do, certain things, expect the ball to do this. On warmer days, the ball's going to do that. Plus, he gave me his own glove that looked like a big pancake, big pancake. And I didn't like it because it was too flimsy. the ball used to fall out, so I, I ended up catching the ball with two hands. But I remember Joel Skinner telling me one time, he said, 
Don't try to frame knock the ball pitcher. You just catch it. Don't worry about it. Trap it. Let the umpire do his job or let the, the hitter swing. Because a lot of hitters swing no matter where he's at because they're anxious about it. Uh, I ended up having a fantastic defensive year that year. I won the gold glove and 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 I was uh, in an all-star game and all rookie of the year or whatever. But I remember that I was nervous about it. We're getting a lot of people saying, we love you, we love you, we looked up to you growing up. That, uh, they're, not, they're not questions, but I'm going to pose a question out of it. Yes. So many people growing up in Cleveland looked up to you. Who did you look up to when you were growing up? I looked up uh, after my father. Yeah. My father was uh, my mentor. My mother they was to rock and the family. You know, my dad had, to, uh, had two jobs. He was a baseball player, but he had to play winter ball. And we rarely saw our dad. But our, our dad always let us, never push us to play baseball. My father never pushed me to play baseball, or my, nor my brother. I rode dirt bikes. I rode bikes. I did karate. I did all the different sports that my, my, my dad probably go, man, this kid's not even mine. <laughs> but at the end of the day, one of the things he, 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 he pushed towards us is you have to care. When you do something, do it with care. Otherwise, you know, all those values that you come up with, uh, will not come to play. If you care, you're gonna you're gonna have desire, and you don't want to perform. And when you fail, you do your best to get out of that funk because uh, because you care. You know you want to you know make a difference in people and, and make a difference wherever you go. Um, so this uh, question comes in online. Which road stadium was your favorite to play in? Oh, I ha I had a few, man. I. I don't know, if you asked me this question 10 years ago or 20 years ago, I had different answers. I like the Royals, Minnesota, uh, actually not Minnesota then. I like the Royals Stadium because it was, it was beautiful, Yankee Stadium because of, of the aura that that brings. Uh, uh, I also like uh, the Anaheim Stadium because I hit good there. So I saw the ball. So it's a lot of uh, based on your success, right? Yes. You, you yeah. A lot of things is based on your success, or a lot of things is based on how you see the ball as a catcher and as a hitter. And uh, but also the atmosphere. You know, the atmosphere has a lot. You know, wow, this is great to play in because it's this. But the Jake was the best of all because the Jake, you know, knowing you but you're playing at home. He was sold out crowd for 455 days. What was that like? Because uh, this is an era that people were walking up and down the streets. Everybody's wearing tribe gear and everybody's smacking hands after a game. What, what, living through that, being at the center of that, what was that like? That was very exciting, man. Very exciting. I remember talking to players from different organizations. And they come to pitch in this ballpark. And they knew that if, if they up by one, two, three, or four runs, it was never secure. Because we had that pu extra push from the fans. It was an amazing run, 455 games sold out that you gave, uh, you gave fans, uh, I mean, the opposition trouble to win here. Everybody came here that was scared. Do you think we're ever going to get back to that? Uh, well, baseball seems to be losing a little bit of popularity right now. No, but also, do you, do you also the city has, all, you know, it had to do with the economy and stuff like that, how, you know, how many people are in Cleveland. Uh, compared to then, and uh, you know, how many people can afford to go to games? I, I have no no clue about that, but I wish you, I, I wish we could. It was it was a, it was a difference maker. It was a fun time. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Dell uh, wants to know where your brother Robbie is. We uh, Dell, you're just tuning in. You mentioned he's still uh, helping out in baseball. Was it Toronto? Yeah, he does. Uh, he does some uh, some. It's called uh, Tournament Twelve uh, camps with uh, Toronto Blue Jays. He works with their front office as a special advisor. So he's been with them like seven years already. Uh, and then Mark Shapiro went over there and, uh, you know, like really embraced Robbie with, uh, with uh, what he's doing. He's, he's in a developing program. Also promoting baseball in Canada, Puerto Rico, and uh, uh, trying to help young kids to be interested in baseball. Okay, let's see. Having spent so many years in Cleveland, what are some of your favorite places in the city? Uh, well, right now, I'll tell you what. Right now, it's the bus, the clear bus yeah. that we're in, right? <laughs> the clear bus. But right now, I'm a, I'm an avid cycler. I'm not, I'm not there to race uh, uh, road bikes or anything like that. I enjoy going to the park, the metro parks. I enjoy going to the uh, Tinker's Creek area, uh, to the towpath. Cleveland does such a good job uh, uh, connecting all these, uh, uh, all these uh, trails. The parks and stuff, yeah. And, 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 and they're fun to, to ride bikes and free your mind and enjoy an off day or early in the morning to do exercise. I enjoy that. And there's a lot of restaurants here that, that are great. Uh, 
I, I go a lot to the strip restaurant, the steakhouse in Avon. Um, I go to I mean, that's like an old barn, right? Yes, yes, it's just fantastic steaks. Uh, I also go a lot to to High Park. You know, well, we leave it in Crocker Park. You know, most of the time uh, you go to the, to the restaurants that are closed there. Right. Um, but uh, Trimo have a tremendous amount of restaurants that are great. Fahrenheit and many other restaurants are here that you have on Fourth Street that people can go. So I enjoy, you know, going around. Except when you're coaching, when you're coaching, you're in the ballpark early. So uh, you have to wait for off days uh, or off, you know, off time in order to enjoy all that time. Let me ask you this, because last time I interviewed Tito, he got into a lot about cribbage. Are you a cribbage no, no, player? No, 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 I'm not. <laughs> Do you avoid cribbage altogether? No, I don't have no clue what cribbage is. Just a big. I don't have no idea. My thing is like I don't know how to play it either, but I've seen, seen he it. He is uh, infatuated with it. That guy plays cribbage 24 seven, and it's a good way to embrace the players and and communicate with the players. Tito does a good job at that. Man, he uh, the way he communicates, with players, he's playing card with it. He's just a he's just open minded guy when it comes to that. And, you know, the locker room is uh, real close. We have a real close niche of players because. Uh, situations like that. You see Tito playing card with a player. Yeah. It becomes... Uh, it's, it's bonding. It's a, it's a, it becomes a bonding experience. Yeah. All right, let's go back online here and see what other type of questions we're getting here. Jamie wants to know, is it awkward wearing a helmet as a first base coach? At first it was. Yeah, I, I did, but I, I understand where baseball is coming from. They want to protect you. Uh, it it would have been awkward if you had to wear a helmet with double flap. That would have been awkward. Uh, <laughs> but... I think that the coaches do a good job protecting themselves. Yeah. They just don't be in that coach's box. People say, hey, get in the coach's box. Get in the coach. When you go on the road, man, you don't have no idea how fast those balls come after they're hooked. You, sometimes you don't even see them. Sometimes they follow you. So, uh, good clue for you. When If you coach first base, you don't want to be in a box because that's where the foul ball pocket is. That's, that's what I learned so far. If you're more in front, you be able to see the ball better. If you're closer to the line, to the fair line, or the foul line, I should say, you, you could be able to see better. If, if, if a guy hooks a ball, it's going to go behind you. No longer is going to be, if the ball, if the ball hit your way and it's hooked, it's not going to be, it's not going to be as hooking as if you're back. Gotcha. So you'll be able to uh, identify where the ball is going right away, and most of the ball there are in the ground. Okay, let's go back here. Adam wants to know, do you believe in the, quote, Cleveland curse? Cleveland curse. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, I mean, many people say that maybe LeBron broke it when he won a championship for the city. Um, but, but do you believe that there was maybe a curse that was uh, keeping the city from winning championships? We had a lot of great um, teams. Yeah, we have a lot of good teams, and we have a lot of opportunities. A, a lot of the, the times the playoff is like 50% luck, too. You catch a bad break. Last year we caught a hum bad break when Bauer got hurt. He was dealing when getting close to the postseason, and then – you know, he was uh, on a verge to be competing for the side young, too, with Corey Kluver. He got hurt. That really ruined your rotation right there. I mean, like, Trevor Bauer healthy would have been probably a different outcome. I don't know if it would have ended up beating Houston because they were hot and they were playing yeah. good. But uh, it would have been a totally different. Well, and you rewind a few years back. The pitching staff was beat up pretty uh, pretty bad when we went in and made the run for the World Series. I mean, that's correct. Rasco was out, right? Salazar was out. I mean, it was like a three-man rotation you guys that's were That's correct. And to. Tomlin, uh, you know, opportunity for Tomlin to come in, he dealt. Yeah. And uh, Corey Kluger was dealing. So we they, those guys got us all the way to the World Series. And, and uh, at the end of the day, we ran out of fumes because those guys were exhausted probably. But that's what we had. And those guys competed. Uh, let's go back online here real quick and see what sort of questions we may be getting in. Um, in your opinion, your favorite, most promising Indian team of all time? Uh, 95. I say 95 was uh, the most prolific top to bottom lineup that probably I've seen in a long time. They just power, speed, average, could catch the ball. We did everything. The one thing probably we lacked in 95 was uh, a number one guy. We have good number twos and number threes. Maybe we lack a, a number one guy, but uh, I, uh, I wouldn't, that team was amazing, amazing to play for. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you know this. I, I don't know if Curtis told you, but part of uh, what you agreed to here was to do a clear bus karaoke. Um, I don't know if you want to sing something about the foggy, oh foggy day in Cleveland town. Oh or <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sandy, thank you so much for joining us. You were great. Thank you for your questions. We thank you for being a part of Let's Be Clear. Can be clear to spot. <laughs>
I didn't know if you were going to bust out or not. Hey, Sandy, thank you so much.